Hey folks, my name's Jimmy, aka Palette of the Dead. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another Warhammer Mortal Realms video as it's Wednesday, so we've got a new issue to go through. Um, as always, if you enjoy the video, hit the like button, hit subscribe, leave a comment down below, all that good stuff. Um, before we get started though, I just want to hope to say that I hope you're all well um, during this crazy kind of period of time that we're all going through at the moment um yeah not much more i can say than that i just hope you were well and hope you everyone that you do you know as well um yeah and we're all just getting on with it i think aren't we um but yeah anyway let's just jump into it shall we uh before we go on too much right this week we get a new pot of red paint so we've got corn red pretty decent uh will very 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 much come in handy um now you'll wonder why you've got one model that has a square base and then you've got your own cir a normal circular base if you're playing the game age of sigma only really uses the circular bases now doesn't use the square bases you can still use them but it's not it doesn't fit in really does it it doesn't fit in with the rest of the, the way the system works or anything um, but we've got a new model to paint up anyway uh, Tomb Banshee from the Nighthawk range uh, it's an older model so it is actually made these were originally kind of done in 2010 as we can see just on the top there um, bit of something different to do and a unit to lead your Myamore Banshees which is pretty cool um, jumping into the issue though we've got details about the Tomb Banshees of course. So the Tomb Banshees are deadly opponents for any mortal. Can the touch of these ghostly spectres can stop the beating heart of any mortal as well and they carry chill daggers um, which can pass through armour to deliver a killing blow. Their most powerful weapon however is their scream. The howl of the Tomb Banshee can instantly kill for it freezes of blood in its victim's veins. Pretty decent stuff pretty decent explanation of how tomb banshees work of course tomb banshees just like mind born banshees are based off celtic myth mythology um and the actual banshees and stuff like that but kind of from folklore um then on the next page you got some stuff about banshee hosts um and how they kind of move around and what they do and large units of banshees going to war um and the kind of little kind of backstory towards the tomb banshee so the lingering hatred centuries ago anitha van hask was betrayed and abandoned by her lover overcome by grief she died in misery cursed to bedevil the realms as a tomb banshee she haunts ancient ruins alongside her mire mourned banshee handmaidens luring mortals to their untimely deaths pretty decent stuff um, it's always nice to have a bit of backstory especially to individual models like that that individual model um, kind of acts like you can treat it like a hero in a way which is always pretty decent um, and always a little bit better uh, moving on we've got information about stormcasts as per usual because um, it's all about the stormcasts against night horns for this magazine so the Stormcast Eternals are created in the Sigmarin, Sigmaron there, under the light of the High Star Sigandil. Within the walls of a Sigmaron lies the Anvil of Apotheosis, the magical device upon which the souls of Fallen are reforged and given their new form, one that will serve Sigma in the many wars to come. Then, of course, we've got a bit of details about certain ones. So you've got a little bit of backstory between about Taurus, Taurus, when I can speak, Taurus for redeemed. Um, if you've read the book *Play Garden*, that's your main character, by the way. Uh, so he was, he used to be known as Torglug the Despised when he worked, when he was uh, essentially a follower of the Chaos God Nurgle uh, until he was killed by the Celestine Prime. He saw a speck of valor in his heart and redeemed his soul. 
Taurus was then reforged as a Knight Venator and now serves Sigma. Good stuff. Uh, and a few little more just there for four different store cast. Um, kind of give you a bit of idea of how backstory works in the Mortal Realms. Then you've got your battle report kind of thing, so kind of like the story of one of the battles over in the Mortal Realms. Uh, all in good old Shaiish, uh, and the fact that unfortunately people disturb the dead, um, which is in Shaiish would be a very, very stupid mistake to make. Um, and then a little bit about Forgotten Tombs and Tomb Banshees as well, and how they haunt and what they do and stuff like that. Moving on, you've got your usual how to build guide. It's pretty simple to build for Tomb Banshee, however, you need to make sure you've got some plastic glue. You can use super glue, however, super glue can kind of melt a little bit of uh, plastic, which isn't great for models sometimes. Um, but if you've got plastic glue like the Rebel glue that I use, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Um, just make sure you fit it together and everything like that. Um, to make sure that everything fits together they suggest dry fitting so that's before make sure that you've got your pieces cut see where it all contacts and then put your glue on before actually fit, fitting it together finally type of thing um the actual step-by-step -step guide of how it fits together we'll go through that in another video um we'll we'll do it um painting there if you're following their kind of thing um of course your usual make sure you put a free a handful of coats so you've got a very very smooth even finish of Corax white for your banshee um, and then they go on to suggest using nilakai oxide uh, over your base coat then dry brush Corax white over the top then they're doing something slightly different um, for painting up your other model, so if you haven't actually fully painted them or you haven't bought any more paints and everything like that and you're just going, going through the, guard, the step by step guides essentially, um, what they suggest is using Cantor Blue on things like the cowls for the chain rasps for glaive wraiths uh, and stuff like that. Um, not a bad idea, just not for me personally. Um, and then make sure you do it over the chain wraiths that come with the thorns of a briar queen um this year suggestion that they make though for your corn red is using it on things like the corsets the bodice for the my Morn banshees the tomb queen the tomb banshee and the briar queen all use um then of course they suggest making sure that you fix any mistakes that you make as well so just by going back over with some corax white to cover up the error um, and your nilakai oxide and then dry brush back over with corax white which isn't a bad idea you know it's pretty decent um, and then kind of what their finished product kind of looks like um, which isn't too bad for things like the mind warm manches it's a pretty decent way of doing it uh, as I say it's just not how I've done it of course because um, I have to be awkward and I have to be different apparently um, with your things like your chain rats though they've already given you Stormhose Silver so you can paint up things like any metal work which they just don't suggest it in this issue I don't know why I think it's I don't know space probably uh, or they're just saving it for a little while but you could do that you can use your Stormhose Silver paint up them uh, then kind of like chains for weapons and stuff like that and give it a bit of a different look um, you also got Retributor Armor which you could use on that things like the candle holder if you wanted to and things like the weapon hilts and stuff like that. Then of course the Briar Queen, how that will look and how the Tomb Banshee will look when she's done and dry and everything like that. Um, which further, further on, more detail will get added on to it of course. Then you've got your battle kind of plan. Um, so how you can kind of play the game and everything like that. So for this one, this week it's three sequiturs versus your tomb banshee and your four Myamorn banshees um, so it's five on three which isn't too bad um, it can be done for either side um, you got your war scrolls just here so sequiturs Myamorn banshees and the tomb banshee as you can see there are two little bits at the bottom of those two 
they are special rules. So them special rules include the Great Mace Blast, uh, which is for your longer weapon, and the Tomb Banshee has does deals mortal wounds. So mortal wounds automatically cause one damage each that cannot be saved, which is pretty cool. So when she does some damage to a secretary, it'll do one damage but no matter what and it cannot be saved, it cannot be blocked or anything like that, which is pretty cool. Um, different as well. And you'll see more special rules as the magazine goes on, I presume. Um, then, more turns and everything like that and how it will work. Um, so yeah, it keeps on going. And then, last but not least, of course, your usual look towards the coming weeks. So, next issue, we get the first part of the Sigmarite Mausoleum. What parts this contains, I don't know. In all honesty, it could be just part of the school, so you might have just one building and a bit of fence work. Um, maybe. We don't know. I don't know. Um, but, I'm looking forward to it because I've actually always wanted the Sigmarite Mausoleum and I've never got around to buying it, so it's going to be probably beneficial. Um, Especially with that Sigmarite Mausoleum, which is like a 40 45 pound worth of kit um, when it's all complete. So, hopefully, you can see it's going to be in at least two to three issues, I reckon, before we fill that out. Um, then, issue 12, which of course we don't really know about until now, um, we get a Night Quester, or Quiesta, if you want to call it. Um, so, it's a hero unit for the Stormcast Eternals, kind of like uh, Zandri as your vault was. Um, but a bit different, so he's mainly a fight, melee fighting unit. Um, but he looks pretty cool, doesn't he? He looks really, really decent. Um, should be quite good to paint him as well. Should be good. Anyway, guys, as always, if you've liked the video, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and leave a comment down below, all that type of stuff. If you do leave a comment, I will try to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Um, but this is a great place to have a bit of a chat about Warhammer um, and painting and miniatures and stuff like that. Um, as I say guys, I hope you're all well. I hope you stay safe. And I will catch you in the very near future. Bye bye now.